we are going into the channels of power don't forget we're talking about power to achieve okay so last two weeks we gave a background um, um, of, of, of what is what we need power for and that everything about our life should be supernatural okay so don't forget i am supernaturally advantage okay thank you there's music at the background thank you so much i have forgotten to put it off thank you so much um i am the director and the composer at the same time forgive me please thank you hallelujah thank you so much god bless you real good now i think i'm okay now you should be fine no the music will go off now i'm sure it's had gone off now it's i need a producer <laughs> I am producer and uh, compare and preacher at the same time. Amen. Praise the Lord. So don't forget, hashtag I am supernaturally advantaged. Rebecca, so nice to see you. Um, I hope you're back in Vancouver now. God bless you. Don't forget our advantage, super, the supernatural is our advantage. Okay, you are connected with a supernatural God, you're a child of a supernatural God. Your birth is supernatural. Everything about your life is supernatural. So don't ever think that you can win in life. You can operate God's power naturally. Okay? We are supernaturally advantaged. Praise the Lord. Now, today go with me to the book of, we're going to channels of power. We'll be discussing channels of power today. Channels of power. Now, there are five basic channels of power from Scripture. Um, I think uh, um, um, we will be, I don't know how long this is going to take us, but I, I, can, I want to assure you that you're, you will be blessed. I'm not going to rush any. It is likely this is going to take us the next five lessons. The Word of God is what we're starting with today. Channels of God's power. The word of God. In other words, I'm giving you um, tools or channels or sources that you can connect to, to operate in the supernatural. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, if you begin to master and you find that um, you must be skilled in using this. You must be skilled. I'll give you a typical example. All right. If you want knees to bow, don't plead the blood of Jesus. Don't, don't, don't call the name of the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible did not say, at the name of the Holy Ghost, every knee will bow. It didn't say, at the blood of Jesus, every knee will bow. It says, at the name of Jesus. So you must be skilled in using this. If you use the wrong um, um, channel at the wrong time, you might not get results, okay? So I need you to be able to understand, um, friends, how this works. It's all in the scriptures, okay? The blood of Jesus, at the name of Jesus... The Word of God, the Holy Spirit, the agreement of the saints. I'm going to also teach us from Scripture how to skillfully apply this when there is a need to operate in power. Is that okay? All right. So today we'll be starting with the Word of God, both revealed and the spoken Word of God. The Word of God. The Word of God. Let me explain, let me talk about, so that you will look forward to these channels, okay, as we talk about them. I did mention of the, the fact that um, uh, at the mention of Jesus, at the mention of the name of Jesus is what makes every knee to bow. Every knee does not bow at the name of the Holy Ghost, okay? Every knee does not bow um, um, at the mention of the blood of Jesus. No, the Bible says the blood is what brings us uh, redemption. The power of the blood, first of all, stands in the realm of redemption. So you are going to move into redemption, into protection, into adoption. All right? But when you, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay? So when you are in trouble, what you need is the name of Jesus. When you need protection, the name of Jesus works, but the blood of Jesus is more potent. We'll come to all that. All right? But it's the same, ladies and gentlemen. Is the same, but you must have a revelation behind each of this source. Praise the Lord. Friends, let's open our scriptures to the book of Matthew and chapter number 8. Matthew chapter number 8. 
the word of God is your number one channel of power. If you must connect to your supernatural advantage, you must be able to operate the word of God and operate it skillfully. There is a skill in the application of the word of God. There is a skill to the application of the word of God. Okay? And uh, they, they, when Jesus was tempted in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 4, also Luke chapter 4, the Bible says each time the devil spoke. If you, you, you cannot answer the devil by your thoughts, I've taught us that before, friends. The only way you can deal with the enemy when he comes with his lies is to give him a word of God, not your own word. Your own word, he has no respect for it, and I'm going to show you why. The only reason why your word can be effective is if your word sits on the bedrock of God's word. Okay, so when Jesus was being tempted, all Jesus said is, it is written. And I did mention to you, it is not necessary for you to know the chapter and the verse and the book, though it is good. All right, Jesus did not say, as it is written, Deuteronomy, so, so, and so, man shall not live by bread alone. No, 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 he just said it is written. So it is sufficient for you to just know what the scripture says. All right, so it is not you knowing the chapter and the verse that will make the word potent. What makes the word potent is the fact that you know what the Bible says. You have the grammar, the understanding of what the word says. So friends, please be ready to win. There are some circumstances in your life after this because you are going to go and practicalize what we're going to learn today. You are going to go and speak to some things in your life, speak to some situations. But I want to teach you what the secret of getting all that done. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So don't get so overwhelmed. Don't, don't, feel, um, don't feel unaccomplished or don't feel unspiritual. If you don't know chapter and verse or you cannot quote scripture like other people can quote scripture, just know what the Bible says. The Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Next time it is written, you shall not tell the Lord your God. Next, I even, even when the devil was quoting it to he didn't say this chapter and verse Leviticus. He said it is written. He will give his angel child over you. Okay? All you need to know it is the, the fact that it is written. And know what is not written. Okay? Know what is written and know what is not written. i give you an example. I don't know about you. When I was young, you know, a lot of folks, when, when we were young, we used to, there was this cliche, there was this saying in school, heaven help those who help themselves. I used to sincerely think it was in the Bible. You know, it says, one of my class will say, you know, the Bible says heaven help those who help themselves. So I'm wondering... So when I got born again, I kept looking for heaven help those who help themselves, and I couldn't find any. Okay, you don't go and tell the devil heaven help those who help themselves, because it is not written in the scripture. So don't feel unaccomplished. See, all the while, go and check scripture. All the while, look at the sermon, look at what uh, Stephen, when Stephen was given, for me, Acts chapter 7, the most comprehensive synopsis of the scripture in one chapter this guy Stephen stood up and he gave the story of the scripture quoting as he was going along but he never gave chapter and verse all right just know what the bible says but please if you go and quote what the bible does not say you will not witness the power of the word the power of the word is in knowing what the bible says exactly what the bible says and the devil will always take you on if you read genesis the bible says and the satan came to meet the woman and said to the woman what the lord said to to to, to adam as in the lord said that you cannot eat of any tree of the garden and the woman said no that's not what god said because what god said is the fact that you can eat of all the tree but you cannot eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil all right so please be clear about that don't struggle with what is not necessary struggle with what is necessary what is necessary is the fact that you know what the bible says hallelujah praise the lord um matthew in chapter number eight i'll read from verse number five and stop at verse number 13. now there when jesus had entered capernaum a centurion came to him pleading with him saying lord my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. Jesus said to him, 
I will come and heal him. Let me explain one little bit here. If you don't ask God, don't expect an answer. It's as simple as that. Ask, you will receive. Once you are lazy in prayer, it brings a limitation to what you can receive from God. Okay? Be prayerful. Please be prayerful. We are getting into a point where prayer is becoming harder and harder these days. Please be prayerful. Ask, you will receive. Seek, you will find. Knock, the door shall be opened. So this man asked, and the Bible says, Jesus obliged him and said, I will come and heal him. Now look at what the Bible says. The centurion answered and said, the moment Jesus agreed to come, please, <laughs> power in the word of God. Now, he says, the Senior said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. But only speak a word. Woo! Only speak a word and my servant will be healed not may be healed not can be healed just you speak and my servant shall be healed for now this is the reason why he made the statement he made in verse 8 he says for i am a man under authority having soldiers under me and i said to this one go and he goes and to another come and he comes and to my servant do this and he does it verse 10 when jesus heard it he marveled when jesus heard it he marveled now I, I i checked what it means to marvel but ladies and gentlemen we'll come back friends rather we'll come back to that jesus when jesus heard it he marveled and said to those who followed him he didn't say to the man he said to those who are accompanying him his, his disciples assuredly i say to you i have not found such great faith not even in Israel. Verse 11, And I say unto you, that many will come from east and west, and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way. <laughs> And as he had, as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. Now, let me explain something. Before I explain something, let me explain or let me just say so. it's exciting, ladies and gentlemen. You know, the God's word is the most refreshing topic you could ever speak on. Jesus, the word of the living God, the most refreshing thing you could ever think. That's the only sermon that can never go stale. That is the essence of the Bible. That's the essence of the scripture. That is the foundation of our faith. And that's why I decided to start with the word of God. What is the word of God? The word of God is what God says. And what God has put together for you and I. Now, let me say this. Until in your heart, you admit and accept that the totality of this word of God is complete and true. And this is what God wants you to know and to have. You cannot get the full benefit of it. I take that again. Until you come to a point in your heart where you have come to know and to understand and to accept that this is the totality of what God wants me to know and to have, you cannot get the fullness of the benefit of God's word. A lot of us, in other words, if I have that disposition to scripture, even when I get to places that I don't understand, I know the, the Bible can never be conflicted. The word of God can never, be, can never contradict itself. It's the only difference why I don't understand that place because I yet don't have understanding. But if I can at some point begin to look and see errors in the scriptures, then I cannot get the fullness of the scripture. Bible says in Romans 3, 4, let God be true and every man a liar. Until you come to that point. Now, I'm giving you the key, the very, very key 
to walking in the power of the word of God. The moment you have any doubt that this word is complete and this word is total, the moment you have any ounce or are you of doubt that this word of God is complete and it is total, you cannot walk in the fullness of his power. All right? So this is the written word of God. The totality. This is Jesus. We cannot know Jesus more than this on this side of existence. You cannot know Jesus more than this. You cannot know Jesus more than this on this side of existence. This is the totality of Jesus. This is the totality of Jesus. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. Mm. And the word became flesh. And dwelt amongst us. This is the word that became flesh. Let's read another scripture before I begin to explain that our text. Hebrews and chapter number 4. Hebrews chapter number 4. Hallelujah. Glory, glory be to my Jesus. Hebrews and chapter number 4. Please, I believe the word of God. I believe that my Bible is a complete, total word of God. There are no errors in it. What men call error is a lack of revelation. Once you have revelation of it, you know that God cannot be wrong. God will never be wrong. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 11 to verse 13. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. Lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. Take note of that please. For the word of God is living and powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, there is power, there is power, there is power in the word. There is power in the word of God. The Bible says the word of God is living, is alive. It is a spirit. John 6, 63. Jesus speaking. He said it is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. The words I say to you, they are not empty words. It is spirit and it is life. This is spirit. It is spirit. It is spirit. It is not letter. It is spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, the word of God is spirit, is life. Is a living thing. It is more living than you and I living. The Bible says the word of God is living and powerful. And sharper. The word is living. Number two, it is powerful. Number three, it is sharper than any two edged sword. To the piercing, even to the vision of souls and spirits and of joints and marrows, it is a designer of the thoughts and the intents of the earth. Acts. Bible says, verse 13, and there is no creature hidden before his sight. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, nobody, everybody will be revealed by the word of God. Everything that is hidden in darkness now, it is this word that will reveal it at the end of the day. Everything we do in the secret is the word of God that will reveal it in the open, ladies and gentlemen. When God will sit in judgment on the final day, on the great white throne judgment, it is the word that will be the basis of his judgment. When Jesus will be rewarding his own children at the mercy seat of Christ, it is going to be the word that will be the basis of the reward or the disreward. Ladies and gentlemen, or rather friends, like I have promised to, to adjust myself, this is the complete word of God. If God did not say anything here, it will not be done. God will not judge you out of this scripture. God will not bless you out of this scripture. God will not do anything for you outside of this scripture. Every judgment, every blessing, every, every glory that you will ever experience in God will come from this word. Bible said it is powerful. It is quick. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it is sharp. It is quick. It is powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, there is power in the word of God. It is powerful. It is powerful. Genesis chapter 1 will show you the power of the word we're talking about. The Bible says, and God said, let there be. And there was, there was no negotiation about it. It cannot be debated. It is not up for discussion. 
Once it is said, it must be done. Once it is said, it must be done. Hashtag, it will be done. It must be done. Once it is said, it must be done, ladies and gentlemen. Once it is written, it will come to pass. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Once it is written, it must come to pass. And I will show you why. Another scripture I want to read before I hit the road. Very quickly, my time is running so fast. I'm so excited about God's word, ladies and gentlemen. Let's read. I will show you that the word of God is powerful. This is the summary. If you understand the word of God and you understand the power in his word, you will understand the power in the blood of Jesus. You will understand the power in the name of Jesus. You will understand the power of the Holy Ghost. You will understand because without the scripture, you cannot understand the Holy Spirit. Without the scripture, you cannot understand the blood of Jesus. Without the scripture, you cannot, you, you cannot be saved without the scriptures. You cannot be healed without the scriptures. You cannot be blessed without the scriptures. God cannot do anything for you without the scriptures. You cannot come to Christ without the scriptures. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. It was the gospel you heard that changed your heart and changed your soul. This is your entry point. This is your hashtag. The word of God is your entry point. Number two, the word of God is your staying point. Number three, the word of God is your building point. Number four, the word of God is your ending point. You will start in the word. You will stay in the word. You will grow in the word. You will end in the word. Ladies and gentlemen, the word is the alpha. The word is the omega. The word is the beginning. The word is in the is the ending. Everything from your start to your finish is the word of God. Once the word of God is out of it, you have nothing from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hashtag the word must be done. The word must be done. It must be done, ladies and gentlemen. The word is my is my entry point. The word is my stay point. The word is my ending point. The word of God is everything and anything. Let us read what David said about the word of God. I'm not going to just quote at you today. Several other scriptures I'm going to give you. Um, I'm going to mention, talk a bit about the school of ministry afterwards. So please stay tuned. For that, give you an update information. Psalms 147. I was reading this this afternoon and I was hitting my head. When the word gets to a point, I hit my head like this. Sometimes I run around and I make a noise. The Bible says Psalm 147, verse 15 to verse 18. He sends out his command to the earth. This is the scripture talking. God sends out his command to the earth. His word runs very swiftly. Ha <laughs> ha. Hashtag, the word is not slow. <laughs> Woo! The word of God is very swift. Very, the Bible says, the Lord sent, commanded, sent his word to the earth. God sent his word to the earth. Now look at how it was accomplished. The word runs very swiftly. The word is fast, ladies and gentlemen. It is not slow. The word is fast. It is not slow. It is not slow. It is not slow. If it has not come to pass yet, if there is a word you are holding on to and it has not come to pass yet, it is not because it is slow. The word cannot be slow. The word does not have capacity to be slow. It is fast. It is sharp. It is swift. If it is not swift, ladies and gentlemen, God will not be able to create the day, the whole earth in six days. If it is not swift, the Bible says, let there be light, and there was light. Let the earth bring forth, and it brought forth. Let the birds show forth, and they show forth. Let the sea bring forth creature. If everything, swift, 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 swift. And may I declare over you this evening, friends, I declare over you the word of the living God. Whatsoever lie of the devil that is trying to make the word of God slow in your life, we hold it in contempt of the word of God. We judge it with the word of God written. The Bible says the word of God is swift. Anything that is contrary to swift performance, express manifestation of the word of God upon your life, we bind it, we judge it with the judgment written. We say it prospers no more. Thus far it has come. So thus far it goes no more. In the name of Jesus. Like and love, if you receive it. The word is swift. The Bible says, verse 16, He gives snow like wool. The word gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. Hey, hey, hey. 
He cast out his hair like muscles. Who can stand before his cold? Verse 15. He sends out his word. <laughs> Woo! Please. Woo! I'm so sorry if I'm misbehaving. But ladies and gentlemen, my wife knows this is my life. He sends out his word. Verse 18. Paint it in your Bible. Put yellow, put green, put purple. God sends out his word and melts them. Every ice of pain, every frost of, 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 of impossibility, every mountain, every snowy mountain, every, everything that are congealed in your life that have refused to melt, we send the word of God, sister, I'm not the one that wrote this. Friends, this is our father speaking. He says he causes, he, he sends out his word and he melts them. Every ice of impossibility, every situation that has congealed, refused to dissolve. We send the word of God against it. We say it begins to melt. In the name of Jesus, the heat of God. In, listen, listen, ladies and gentlemen, Genesis 1.1. Yeah, is the perfect place. Genesis 1 2. Um, judgment of God had come upon the earth. So the earth was now without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep because the Lord withheld the sun from giving his light. The Lord caused, because there is no sun to give his light, there was no heat. Everything got frozen. Bible says, because everything was frozen, for God to defrost it. There was a flood that destroyed, which was a flood before the time of, before the flood of Noah. There was an initial flood. Another day we'll talk about it. I will show you later in scripture. And everything got overwhelmed by water. And that flood, unlike the second one, the second one did not kill um, vegetation. It did not remove vegetation on the earth. After everything, God did not plant plants again. But this first one, everything, the Bible says in the book of Job, everything became a desert. You read Job, you read Jeremiah, I'll show you also in First Peter, everything became a desert. The Bible says, when it was time, God now sent his word. The Spirit of the Lord moved upon the surface of the water. Everything was already congealed. Everything was iced. It was just stuck like this. Because if there's no sun, ice will overtake all of us. Everything will be frozen. I, the heat of the sun is the only reason why ice will melt. May the heat of the word of God come upon that situation in your life. Every frozen situation, everything congealed out of, and out of God's judgment, out of the wickedness of the devil, out of our unbelief, may the word of his mercy be sent forth to your life to dissolve it now in the name of Jesus. Like a love, receive it. Let's go back to Matthew and chapter number 8. Hallelujah. Matthew and chapter number 8. There are three things you must understand about the power in God's word. Now, these three things I'm going to leave you with, please. Friends, I don't know. I'm just praying that the Holy Spirit will help me explain this to you. Bible says the centurion came to Jesus. And he said to Jesus, he said, sir, my, my servant is at home. A centurion is someone that leads a, an army of a hundred people. Now, the Bible did not tell us whether this guy is a Jew or whether he is a, um, a Roman. But because the, 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 um, the Jewish soldiers also that were under Herod, where the, the organization was structured after that of the Romans also. But what we know is the fact that this guy was just, was a Gentile, okay? He was a Gentile. It is from the amazement that Jesus showed he was a Gentile. Now, scripture records, ladies and gentlemen, or rather friends, that he came to Jesus and he said, Sir, my son lies at home. I, can you come and heal him? The moment Jesus agreed to come, he now said, Sir, there's no need for you to come. Um, just send your word. Say a word. Why? Bible says the man explained why he said your word will be enough. Now this is what the power, the revelation behind the power of God's word. The man said, I understand authority. I understand authority. He says, I'm a man under authority. 
And also, I operate in authority. Now, please, two things. I'm a man under authority. In other words, I know what it means to obey authority above me. I know also what it means to give orders to those underneath me. So I carry out what I receive as an order and the people that I give orders to must carry out my orders. That's what the man said. Two dimensions, ladies and gentlemen. One of the main and key reasons why now let, let me explain this a little bit further, friends. For you to be able to get and operate the power of God's word, you must understand authority. Now, authority simply says that you must first of all have a clear understanding of the position of the person that is speaking. Now, it is the position that will determine the authority the person has. It is not the person that will determine the authority. It is the position the person has that determines the authority. I'll give you a typical example. If I go and probably I'm, I'm, I'm driving on the streets of Dallas and the po a policeman um, in his uniform um, comes and drives by me and he tells me to park. I must park, or rather pull over, forgive my Nigerian English. He tells me to pull over into the, into the shoulder, I must pull over. If another person, uh, another motorist drives next to me and tells me to pull over, I'll look at him and ask him, why? Why? Who are you telling to pull over? For what reason? He has no authority to tell me to pull over. All right? Authority. So it is the position that determines the authority that the person can operate in. Please stay with me. This is the revelation behind the power in God's word. This man said, sir, don't bother coming to my house. Not because his house was not good. This was a centurion. He was more like a captain. Someone you call a major general. No, not a major general. Someone you call uh, um, a colonel in, in today's army. This guy was well off. He was influential. And the, the Bible records about him that the, this man, in fact, the Luke version of this story says the man had built even a synagogue. That's how rich he was. He had built a synagogue for the Jews before. All right? So it, it was not that this man was feeling so um, unfulfilled with his house. He felt his house was too appalling for Jesus to come to. No, he was, his house was nice. Jesus would have gotten there and said this is a good house. So that was not the reason why I said Jesus not to come. He says, I know authority. I understand authority. Now, this man said... In saying that, he's simply saying, he, well, the moment he told Jesus and said, Jesus, just say a word. He simply acknowledged two things. Number one, Lord Jesus, I know your position. Now, because I know your position, number two, I know the authority that is connected to your position. So it is not about Jesus as a person. It is about Jesus as the son of God. Listen to me carefully. It's not about Jesus as a person. It's about Jesus as the Son of God. Now, <laughs> please understand this. So it says, authority, two dimensions. The one you receive and the one you issue out. The one that you are under and the one you are above. The one you receive, the one you issue out. The one that you are under and the one that you are above. Now, here it is. So when you, are, when you hear a word, when the man heard the word, two things he analyzed in his heart. Number one, it's what is the authority or what authority, what authority does this person have? In other words, this guy had the revelation of who Jesus is, not as a person, but the fact that Jesus is Messiah, not Jesus the son of Joseph. He had the revelation of Jesus of as Messiah, as the Son of the Living God. Because of that, he knew the same word he speaks is equivalent to the same word that God speaks. And he knows if God's word is sufficient enough to create the earth out of nothing, then this word is all he needs for anything to be fixed. Hey! 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 <laughs> May the Lord explain this to you. So the guy is saying, please stay with me. 
The guy is saying, Lord, you don't need to come to my house because I know the authority and the position you stand in. Now, because of the position you stand in, I know the authority that is connected with that position. He was standing in as God. And I know the authority that backs God up or the authority that is God. And God's word cannot fall to the ground. Now, this is the point. The man said, sir, I have learned to receive instruction. I carry it out. When I give servants instruction, so I know how authority operates. I know that your authority is not from here, Jesus. Hey! I know, Jesus, that what you are, your authority is not from here. You know, in the book of John, Jesus was telling the people, he said, I don't say anything of my own. What I hear my Father in heaven say, that is what I say. I don't just talk. The authority that backs me up is not from here. The authority that backs me up is from heavenly places. I'm coming back there, ladies and um, friends. That's why when Jesus saved us, he did not put us here on earth. He made us sit together with him in heavenly places. Now, I'm getting somewhere gradually. The authority that you are going to have in God's word is connected to the obedience. Jesus said something. He said, I don't just do things of my own. I am obedient to my father. I am obedient to my father. Now, because I am obedient to my father, I can sit in the position of my father and say things. In other words, I will not have authority, the word will be of no effect in my mouth, if I am not obedient to the one on whose authority I want to speak. Holy Ghost, help me here. Lord, I really need you to help me. Let me say this in a simple way. In a very simple way. If you meet myself and our, our beloved president um, in the United States, Donald Trump. Now, that's the president of the United States. Probably the most powerful, most powerful, politically powerful man on earth. And you've done something and the man looks at you and says, well, I confer on you honorary citizenship of the United States of America. I'm sure you will celebrate because it is done. He has the authority to do so. If I tell you honorary, <laughs> there should be no dance except the Holy Ghost is telling me to tell you. All right? Because I don't have the authority to, to do it. Jesus was able to operate. His word did not fall to the ground. His word was powerful because he was obedient to his father. This man explained to us the secrets of God's power. As long as I live in obedience to God, I will see and experience the power of God's word. God will not allow his word fall to the ground. Let me, let me explain this. First Samuel and chapter number 3. My time is running. First Samuel chapter number 3. Very, very quickly. Let me read it for you. Obedience is your key to exercising the power in God's word. This guy said, I know how to receive orders from my bosses. And I obey and I must obey. All right? And whether I like it or not, I must just obey. I know how to be obedient to those, to authority above me. I know how to be obedient to the Holy Ghost. Chapter 3, that should be verse 19 if I'm correct. 4 Samuel chapter 3 and verse number 19. Bible says, and Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him. And let none of his words fall to the ground. Why? Samuel was obedient to God. Samuel was obedient. You now see why Saul's word can fall to the ground and that of David will not. To operate the word of God in power, you must learn to obey God. I'm telling you the truth. You must obey God. 
when you obey God, you can step into his authority. Let me give you another typical example. Years ago, while, while we were still pastoring, I used to run a program called Winds of Change. Um, uh, got the name from one of my friends, uh, my, my uh, good brother, David Oludo, who used to run it. his conference, then was called Winds of Change. So I adopted that name to, but ours was a prayer meeting. So we have, we have it once every quarter, more like a retreat in the city. Now I, I needed to, in some way, just connect what I'm expecting from, for, from God in that meeting to the grace of my, of my spiritual leader, which is our general overseer, Pastor Yair Adeboye, then. So everything that was done in that meeting, everything whatever offering that was ever giving whatever whatever i will put it together and i send it to my to my father in the lord guess what most of the miracles that were being experienced in camp were being experienced there why not because um uh, i was that anointed no 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 but because when you reverence authority that is in christ jesus the word works for you. So the word of, and that, I think you should read this book, Loyalty and Disloyalty by um, Doug Edward Mills. Very, very powerful book. You will understand authority and for, uh, when you understand authority, you understand the power in God's word. It is very, very, very important. But please, don't obey leaders or authority above you that you know are not I'm not submitted to God. Paul said, be followers of me as I am of Christ. If my leader is not following Christ, I'm not following anybody. All right? You, I will not face Christ on the final day and give excuses as my, my use, um, have my leader as my excuse for, for not obeying him. All right? Okay? If you live a life of obedience to God, and that was the secret of Jesus, because of his obedience to God, to his father, his word never fell to the ground. Now, never okay and the bible says once you have a clear you had obedience to the authority given to you from the one above you then you to be easy for you to tell the ones below you you go here and the bible says the man said they must go you go and do this it does not have to follow through they must do it why the measure with which you meet shall leave a med back to you the key to operating power in the word of God is to have revelation of authority. Revelation of authority. If you're in a system and all you do is uh, you rebel against that system and you are very, very loud about it and you bring your leader to disrepute, um, you will not get the best of that system. You will not thrive in it. In the same vein, our system, the person who put our own kingdom together is, the, is our father in heaven. For us to get the best of him, we must obey him. By the time we obey him, by the time I haven't obeyed him, when we give orders by his word to things below us, they must obey. If there's anything, you, you cannot operate, that's the truth, ladies and gentlemen, uh, friends rather. You can't operate God's word without a heart of obedience. You cannot. You cannot. That is the key to it. The Bible says, let me read it for you for another scripture. Uh, Romans and, sorry, Hebrews and chapter number 5 and verse number 8. Hebrews 5, 8. Hebrews 5, 8. The Bible says, Though, let, let me start from verse number 7. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him, who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear? Listen, ladies and um, friends, the Bible is telling us clearly here. Let me read it one more time, please. Hebrews chapter 4. Sorry, Hebrews chapter 5 and verse number 7 and 8. Hebrews 5, 7 and 8, please. Talking about Jesus. Let me start from verse 5 so it will make some sense. So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, 
you are my son today i'll be gotten thee and he also says in another place you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek, who in the day of his flesh when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death talking about jesus and the garden of gethsemane and was heard god heard him please why did he hear him because of his godly fear jesus though he be god he he feared his father i won't lie to you there's no room for lies and i don't care what your motivational speakers are telling you if you are not diligent in obeying god the word of God will fall to the ground in your mouth. I heard of someone that um, the robbers came to the house. Those days when I was young, robbers came to the house and suddenly one sister started speaking in tongues. You know what the, 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 the robber did? The robber slapped her. Slapped, gave her a terrible slap. She almost had concussion. Then she stopped praying in tongues. And nothing happened to the robber. Let me tell you through power. One of the pastors that had served under me at some point in time, robbers came to the house. He didn't speak in tongues. He told the robber, he said, why did they come to his house? And the robber said they came to rob, rob him. And he told them he has nothing that belongs to him. Everything in that house belongs to Jesus. And the robber slapped him. Slapped, uh, that's my, that pastor. Slapped him so bad. I mean, the next day I saw, because he's a very light-skinned person, I saw the the mark of the slap on his face. You know that robber did not make it home. He didn't make it home. In the morning when they, they all came out and the whole thing episode was over, they saw his body on the street. He was killed by his boss for wanting to steal from, <laughs> from the gang, <laughs> from the group, hiding the booty. That is the power of obedience. I have another brother, he shared his testimony with me some few days, some, some time ago. Robbers also went to his, came to his house and they wanted to rob him. And he told them, he said, okay, you can take this one, that one you can take. Then the robber went now went and took some money in, the, in, in his, in his, in his um, closet. And, and he told the robber, he said, you can't take everything, that he has no money to spend. So the robber has to give him some money to spend and the robber can go with the rest. And the robber said, okay. Then he divided the money into two, gave him money. But the robber went with the house. And this was the same robber that went to other places and had killed people and had taken everything they had. And he didn't know that until the it was the next money. There is power in obedience. There is, this Jesus was able, everything Jesus did, he did as man. Jesus was able to do all these things because he was able to operate in an authority Authority in the word of God comes from obedience to the one above you. Obedience to your father in heaven, first of all. Then obedience to your authority. I'm going to stop there today. I'm going to stop there today. Um, don't forget, it's about authority. Um, obedience to authority. Please do not forget. It is the truth, ladies and gentlemen, or friends. This is the gospel truth. Jesus said to his disciples, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now, let me read verse 8 of that scripture I read. It says, though he was a son, talking about Jesus, Hebrews 5, 8 now, yet he learned obedience by the things he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who will obey, called by God as high priest, according to the other Mesizedek, to whom we have much to say and ha had to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. Obedience. Obedience, ladies and gentlemen, or men and brethren, obedience is the key to operating the power of the word. This man said, I know, the Bible says, by the time it was done, Jesus was so marveled. He was so marveled. I, found, I, would, I looked up scripture. There were only two instances in scripture where the Bible says Jesus was marveled. Number one was in this case. He was marveled at his faith. The other one is in Mark 6.6. 6. Jesus was marveled at their unbelief. Such an irony. 
two extremes. But let Jesus be marveled at your faith. This man said, whatever you tell me to do, sir, I will do. Because I understand authority. And I know once you say, it must stand. Do you believe God's word? Do you know obedience helps your faith? Obedience helps you believe easily. I'm telling you the truth. Go and try living in obedience to God. Obedience helps you believe easily. The Lord bless you. Um, by Friday, you can visit um, www.cman.org to register for School of Ministry. I did say I was going to have 40 students, um, but for some reason, I checked the coursework, I checked the logistics, and it's not likely I'll be able to handle 40 at a time. So I'm reducing it to 20. So it's the first 20 that registers um, that we'll, I will have to take on. Um, I'm so sorry, I apologize for logistical reasons. We couldn't get the website ready for registration today, but please buy Friday. I think Friday, just go there, um, www.c-man.org, and then you will be able to register. The Lord bless you and be with you. Um, God be with you, please. Obedience. Obedience, first of all, to God. Uh, obedience, first of all, to God. Then obedience to authority, godly authority above you. Godly authority above you, please. The Lord be with you. Have a wonderful week. There is a word for you from God. And the word says, you will not see the wind, you will not hear the rain. Yet the valley will be full of water. The Lord bless you and keep you. It's a great week. Um, expect great things. Don't forget for the supernatural to happen, you must have expectation. Um, God keep you. If you have any particular prayer point, please send it in. We'll be able to pray along with you, along with my team. I want to thank the Explore the World team. There are some people that work behind the scenes to make this happen um please i will just want you to type help me thank them these five young folks have been awesome they they're a gift from god to me and i i, I sincerely cherish god in them and um uh watch out for them earth they are these are these are generals in the making god bless you and have a glorious week and don't you ever forget, it's all about Jesus until I come your way again next week, 5 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, and, um, 3 p.m. Pacific Time, 11 p.m. UK and Nigerian Time, and midnight European Time. The Lord be with you, and the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. <laughs>